Atmana Satchidangshascha Buddhir Vritirti Dvayam Sangyodja Chavivekena Janamiti Pravartate Atmanaha of the Self Satchit Angshaha The Existence Knowledge Aspect Cha and Buddhe of the intellect, vrittihi, modifications, iti, thus, dvayam, the two, sangyojya, superimposition, cha, and avivekena, through lack of discrimination, janami, I know, iti, thus, Pravartate arises. The notion I know arises from the indiscriminate superimposition of the existence knowledge aspect of the self on the modifications of the intellect. Namaste. So we have often heard that this material world is an illusion. But how is it an illusion? What is the mechanism? Well, the mechanism is consciousness. Now, a lot of people think that consciousness is the reality. <laughs> but that can't be so, because consciousness is dualistic. Isn't it? You have the subject, the object, and the relationship between them, the perception. So it's actually triple. And we've discussed this numerous times before. But without consciousness, there is no world. Consciousness is fundamental. So we have to look at how consciousness arises. And this is a deep insight that reveals so much about reality that the consciousness existence aspect, sat chit angsa. Uh, angsa means uh, a limb, like an arm or a leg. Uh, so the potency of existence and actually awareness, chit means awareness the fundamental, basic awareness or the ability to perceive things is the foundation, the platform, or the substrate for consciousness. Without this basic awareness, you don't have consciousness. You have only self-awareness. So self-awareness is the basis. And then on top of that, we superimpose this other thing. <laughs> oh, what is that? The vritti. Vritti means modifications of the mind. The chitta vritti is mentioned in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras as the thing that has to be done away with, the thing that has to be set aside to attain yoga. Yoga means linking. Uh -huh. Linking what? The individual soul with the supreme soul or the jiva with the paramatma, however you want to, whatever terminology you want to use. So, this means the whole process of religion, of devotion, of meditation, leads to this point where we have this crucial insight that when we superimpose the changes, the modifications of the mind on awareness, this creates consciousness, 
and consciousness creates everything else. Isn't it? Because when we wake up from sleep, the whole world comes into existence. And when we go back into sleep, the world disappears. And all we know then is the dream world. Or in Sushupti, no world at all. No mind, no body, no senses, no objects, no actions, no qualities, no nothing. Why? Because there are no chitta vritti in Sushupti. So these chitta vritti, when they subside, uh, when they're done away with, nirodaha, Patanjali says, also Buddha says, that when these changes of the mind are done away with, then the reality. And there's nothing you have to do, huh? because the reality is already there. You simply have to remove the illusion, neti neti. This is yoga. This is meditation. This is self-realization. The self is already realized, Ramana says, because do you know anybody who would deny that they exist? <laughs> Ask any idiot on the road, <laughs> do you exist? <laughs> They're going to say yes. Nobody is going to say no unless they're insane. I actually met somebody like that one time. It was, I think it was on uh, YouTube, even. He was making comments that I do not exist. <laughs> well, this is psychosis. Because obviously, even to say I do not exist, you have to exist. So this is schizophrenia, where you have one part of the mind that disagrees with the other part of the mind. And the conflict drives you insane, literally. So through some aberration of thinking, they reach the point where they say, I don't exist, but they still exist. Now, when we reach the pinnacle of self-realization, we also reach that point that I don't exist. But the meaning of I, in both cases, is the tiny empirical self, the jiva, the one who is born, the one who suffers, the one who is the recipient of karma. Karma means all the results of the work that we have done in the past. And because we have been under this illusion of consciousness that the world exists, that I, the jiva, exists, that there are all these actions and these objects, this creates results. And the results are the reciprocal of the actions. So if we hurt someone else, some other living being, or cause them any inconvenience or pain, we have to experience the identical suffering in some future existence. We don't see this because it happens in a future life. We only see the prarabdha, the karma that is fructifying in this life. So people talk about past lives and this and that, but if you want to know your past life, look at your present life, look at your karma, look at the things that are happening without your conscious intention, but are just happening to you, unavoidable. That's karma, the power of God to make you experience 
the things that you have forced others to experience in the past. So we can tell very easily by the present life, by the quality of the consciousness and the quality of the karma, the causes in the previous life that made it so. So if we're suffering in this life, we can understand that we cause suffering to others in a previous life. Buddha said, life is hard, therefore one should be kind. And the greatest kindness is to spread this transcendental knowledge, this knowledge of consciousness, knowledge of being. Being, existence, consciousness, and bliss. These are the potencies of the Absolute, Brahman, the Self. And we are all that Self. Uh, we are already that. That's why nobody is going to say that they don't exist. Of course, we know that we exist. How do we know? Directly. No instrument of knowledge, such as language or thought, is necessary to know that you exist. So similarly, the self in its native state, before it becomes covered by upadis, like the citta vritti, huh, is like that, completely peaceful, completely pure, completely detached from so-called reality the material world, which is actually just an illusion created by consciousness. Consciousness is the magic trick that the mind uses to create the world. So if you can penetrate, if you can take this shloka or this, actually this mantra of Atma Bodha and meditate on it, and observe it in yourself, then you can undo the whole illusion of the material world, material existence. Because the material existence, the, the existence of the material world is only borrowed. It's not intrinsic. It's not a quality of matter to exist, to live, to move, to be conscious? No. Matter is not possessed of these qualities. Only the self, only Brahman has these qualities. So if we see this body, this mind, changing, moving, doing things, knowing things, and so on, we can understand that this is the illusion. This is only consciousness. Only consciousness. Huh? I was in this group this uh, when I was first involved in spiritual life, when I met my Adi Guru, and he brought me to India and so on. I was in this group, ISKCON, or Krishna Consciousness Movement. And now that I look back on it, they never explained what consciousness actually is. This is a, the weirdest thing, huh? The thing is named Krishna consciousness, huh? And the avatar, the, the god, is Lord Chaitanya. But what's his full name? Krishna Chaitanya. And what's the meaning of that? Krishna consciousness. But yet they never explain what is the meaning of Chaitanya. And the reason they never explained it is because consciousness is only explained in the Upanishads. And if you read the Upanishads, you're going to go beyond this idea of consciousness, of whatever, anything, and realize the actual self which is pure awareness 
of beingness. By beingness, we mean sat, eternal, unconditional existence. No birth, no death, infinite being without any boundaries. This is the self. This has to be realized. This is the pinnacle of enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.